Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. In this tutorial, I will show you how to calculate the magnetization of iron crystal and how to calculate a spin polarized density of state. And uh, in this video, I will use the collinear calculation, which means that the magnetization is along z axis. So this is okay for iron because the z axis is actually along 0, 0, 001 uh, direction. However, if it is nickel or it is uh, some more complicated mat material, the magnetization could point into other directions. So in that case, you need to use the so-called uh, non-collinear calculation, which we will talk about later. Uh, for iron crystal, um, it has a very rich uh, phase diagram. Below 912 degrees C, it is uh, the alpha iron phase, which is the BCC lattice. If you increase the temperature, it will go through uh, FCC and BCC and then is melted. So um, in this video I will focus on the alpha iron phase which is BCC lattice because this is the most common phase at room temperature. And uh, as usual I will first calculate the crystal constant by doing a variational cell relaxation and I will, cal uh, I will uh, basically compare the calculation with the reference and then I will calculate uh, how many Bohr magnetons per iron atom. So basically that is the calculation of magnetiz magnetization. And uh, I will also compare it with the reference. And then this is the uh, spin polarized tensile state of iron um, that is uh, in, in literature. And we will also calculate that. Okay, so let's get started. So for the variational cell relaxation, uh, I guess you are more or less familiar with it. This uh, eyebrow equals three is the BCC lattice. And here, since iron is a, is a metal, we have to use the smearing uh, argument here that um, we smearing and smearing equals, uh, so in this case, we change to this method rather than the default Gaussian method. I think both will work, but um, I just want to show you that this, also, this method also works here. Okay, and the uh, Gaussian broadening is around 0 0.01. This is a small value. You can also increase it to be 0 0.02 or 0 0.05. It, you, just, uh, you can just try around. And this is something new that uh, n spin equals two means that uh, it is a, sp a spin polarized calculation. Uh, if you usually uh, if you don't uh, specify this line as we did before, it is auto uh, n spin is automatically uh, set to be one, which is the um, non uh, non spin polarized calculation. And if if you uh, do the spin polarized calculation, you need to uh, uh, specify the starting magnetization. So this means that the starting magnetization of the first type of atom is uh, is zero point one. So since there is only one type of, of atom that is iron, we basically set that uh, set the magnetization of that iron to start with uh, 0 0.1. Um, so this value is not too critical. What value do you put here? You can say 0 0.5 or 1 or 0 0.01 because uh, because this is just a starting point. The, the self-consistency calculation will automatically update the value to the optimum uh, value. So, uh, but but you cannot set it to be zero here. If, if you set it to be zero, the symmetry will not be broken um, and it will al always remain spin unpolarized. So that's why you need to specify uh, even a small value to break the symmetry. Okay. So everything else is the same. And uh, I will not run the calculation because it takes a little bit longer. And I just show you the output file here. That, uh, where's the... Okay, yeah, so this is the cell parameter. And um, it shrinks from 0 0.5 to 0 0.47 uh, multiplied by this a lot number and you uh, and I already put it here and you see that the error is a little bit larger than before uh, but still uh, it's okay the reason why this is larger is because iron is transition metal and uh, usually for DFT for transi transition metals are a little bit problematic 
And、um, another thing is that we are doing spin polarized calculation, so so that's why. But but still, this is、uh, this is quite good. Okay, and then, yeah, and then we want to do a self consistency calculation to calculate the wave function. We already update the、uh, the crystal constant to be the out output from the VC relax, and everything else we keep keep it the same. It, It's just that we increase the k points to ten, ten, ten. The reason is that、uh, this SCF calculation is actually a, a single point calculation, so we can afford to increase the number of k points and、um, and increase some precision.、Uh, so I already start the calculation, and now it's finished. Let's take a look at the out output file of this SCF calculation. And、um, yeah, and you already see here magnetic、uh, magnetic moment per side, and there's only one atom, and the magnetic moment、uh, this is one point nine five two two, and we we copy it to here. So this is the calculated、uh, magnetization. That's the Bohr magneton per atom. Yeah, and then so this is one one way that you can check. And another thing is that you can see from from、uh, basically here, yeah, is one point nine three Bohr magneton per cell or two point zero one. It doesn't doesn't matter. There there is some error,、uh, but it's around two, yeah. So let's say the the error bar from、uh, from the calculation and the reference is around ten percent. That is also.、Uh, Not bad. Okay, and then another thing that we may already notice here is that the the energy, the total energy, changes from minus sixty five to、uh, to let's say maybe forty forty five. Yeah, and that we will use in the in the in the、uh, density state calculation later. Okay. And then the third step is to do a non-self-consistency calculation with a denser k point. So everything else is the same. We just change the k points to be、um, much denser, twenty by twenty by twenty, and then we just do the calculation. Okay, so now it's finished. Let's check what's in the output file. And you see, it's quite short. The reason is that、uh, the number of k points is above one hundred, so it will not output the k points. Okay, so the Fermi energy is twenty-two point zero eight nine six. This will also be useful when we plot the tensile state. Okay, and then the next step is to is to、uh, calculate the tensile state using DOS dot X program, and then, as I mentioned before, you need the starting energy and the end energy that you can get from the output file of the、uh, self consistency calculation from minus sixty five to around forty five. Let's say we、uh, go to fifty, and、uh, this is the output file. That contains the data of the tensile state, and then we just do the calculation. Okay. So this is the data file. You may already see the difference. Before we only have three columns: energy, tensile state, and integrated tensile state. But now we have four columns. So the tensile state is divided up to two、uh, columns. One is the tensile state of the spin up electrons. One is the tensile state of the spin down electrons. So we have to plot them separately, and we need to、uh, modify our、uh, GNU plot、uh, script so that it can plot two two channels separately. So what I already write here is that is that I add a reference line of the Fermi energy. That is twenty-two、uh, around twenty-two electron volt, 
and then I change the uh, limit of the x axis to, to center it around the Fermi energy so that we can see the structure clearer. And then we plot the, uh, the first two columns, that is the density state of the spin up electrons, and then the first column and the third column, that is the density uh, state of the spin down um, electron. And uh, I use a minus sign here because um, I guess usually people want to plot it one above and one below the x-axis to make it clearer. So that's uh, that's how you do it. And then we just plot the tensile state. Okay, so this is the output. Um, you see that the tensile state of the spin up and the spin down electrons are shifted so that there is a, a finite magnetization, and this is the Fermi energy. If you compare it with the reference that I have here, you see that it, it is very similar. You have the same peak structure, and then Fermi energy is the same, the shift is the same. So, uh, so the conclusion is that we uh, successfully um, calculated the, um, the spin polarized density state of iron, and, um, and it is similar as the as the reference in literature and also the magnetization is also similar so in today's video i have shown you how to calculate the spin polarized calculation how to calculate the magnetization and how how to calculate the spin polarized density of state and uh, i hope you enjoy this video if you like my video please uh, press like or subscribe to my channel okay uh, thank you for watching and i hope to see you next time